it taught me how to um, just become who I am to know that I, I can do it. You know, I can do it too. Not just you, Rob, I can too. And so I just remain uh, thinking in that way of thinking. And, and that's what my biggest lesson is from that is you can do it too. What is up, friends? Rob here, and I'm back with a brand new Spitting Fire podcast for all of you today. And today I'm excited because I have Pastor Darnell and Letitia Jackson with me, and I know they're going to spit some serious fire. Guys, will you say what's up to everybody real quickly? Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited they're on here. I know they're going to bring it today. But before we dive into that, I want to remind you why I interview top leaders in different spaces. That's because I believe, this is a mantra that I live by, that all of you were created on purpose for a purpose. And I pray that something that we talk about today will divinely inspire you to start living on purpose. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't think of any better year to start living on purpose than 2022. So, Letitia, Pastor Darnell, thank you guys so much for being here. I know you're busy. And uh, like I said, I know it's going to be an awesome interview today. So let's start this way. Letitia, let's start with you. Can you give us a 30,000-foot view of your story, maybe a little bit of the past? where you came from, some of that transition time, maybe some hurdles, some things you kind of had to battle through up to what you're doing today. Okay. So I am Atisha Jackson. I was raised in a small town called Houston, Mississippi. Uh, went to school there, uh, very active in school, band, basketball, pageants, you name it. <laughs> That's what I did. And uh, moved to Tupelo uh, when I attended college at ICC. And I wanted to go to school to... Um, be a pharmaceutical sales rep. I wanted to go to school to focus in marketing. I've always known I wanted to do something dealing with business, just didn't know what direction to take in. So I figured marketing probably would be a, a very broad way of, of getting into sure. it and learn more about pharmaceutical sales and thought, hey, that'd be something I think I could, I would love to do. Um, because I worked in sales, uh, like the you finish lines, the shoe store, and I did a little sales there, and I ended up enjoying the sales. And so as I was into college, I realized I had to have some selling experience in order to become a pharmaceutical sales rep, not just having a four-year degree. And so I thought, well, what could I do in order to, you know, uh, get into the market? And so uh, as I was working another job, I found some people that was selling insurance for this company mm -hmm. and a part-time. And I was like, well, I could do the same thing. And, um, you know, and I went out and pursued selling insurance part time, all just to get the experience so I could become this great pharmaceutical sales rep. But little did I know, Rob, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Ended up quitting that job to pursue insurance <clears throat> full time and um, never looked back. I never looked back uh, from there. But I will say, by me quitting my job, I had some hurdles because it wasn't the best company for me to be at to pursue what I was looking for. I need to say I was a single parent doing so. And so after about six months, I went through a, a hurdle. I stopped selling insurance. It was horrible. It was horrible from chargebacks to it was it's a bad deal. It was a bad deal. To, I said, you know what? I'm not going to do insurance ever again. So I took on a job. I'm working at, at Walmart, actually working at Walmart there. Yeah. And so um, going from job to job, I even did some factory work, you know. <laughs> so but I always knew it was something more to it than that. But I knew the opportunity presented itself. And I say, you know what, I'm going to try it again. It was mortgage protection. And I tried it again. I became actually pretty good at it from uh calling over the phone, you know, calling leads, got on $300 a week, but I, I became very, very good at it, you know, writing ten to $15,000 in AP a week in life insurance sales there. And uh, as time went on, you know, the Medicare space opened up, I got into Medicare some, and then ACA came up and I, I found my niche, I found what I love to do. And that's where I am today. And Darnell, he's here with me because he was working in the factory at the time uh, that we decided to do to be serious about insurance. And God blessed us to where we could 
the business will sustain itself to where he can come off his job and pursue what he wanted to do in ministry. So it has truly, truly been a blessing for us um, what has transpired over the amount of years, not knowing what we was going to walk into. Yeah, I love that. And just want to focus on a couple of things. But number one is a lot of people would have quit after that first bad experience. Yeah, right? and maybe you're and, and maybe you're watching today and that's where you're at. Maybe you've gotten with the bad upline or maybe something else has happened, whatever the case may be. That's that's not even important. But I think what Letitia's telling us today is just don't quit. Keep right. betting on yourself. Don't be scared to try again. What was it in you, Letitia, that said, I'm just going to try this thing one more time? You know, we all feel like that we can be better at what we do. You know, and I was tired of just basically going from check to check, trying to figure it out. I was tired of trying to pay my bills and not knowing when it comes going to afford to pay my light bill versus the water bill or buy groceries for my home. And so just that the desire to want more in life, I said, you know what, I'm going to try this one more time because I know it's something better for me than what I am experiencing right now in life. Sure. What was the biggest lesson you learned from that hard season? Was there something that uh, even though it may not have been the best and most fun season and chargebacks and all that, was there something that you learned, though, that's helped contribute to your success today? Yes, I learned that I can do it. I learned that if you just apply yourself and just continue to focus and do what you're taught to do, that you can do anything. So it taught me how to grind. It taught me how to um, just become who I am to know that I, I can do it, you know, I can do it too. Not just you, Rob, I can too. And so I just yeah. remain uh, thinking in that way of thinking. And, and that's what my biggest lesson is from that is you can do it too. Sure. And and now now you're a podcaster, yes. multi six figure going yes. on seven figure. We're, we're yes. going to <laughs> that, right? Seven figure right. agency owner, pastor's wife, mm -hmm. right? Agent. Uh, probably New York Times bestseller coming up. I don't know, whatever <laughs> they're playing today. But the bottom line is, if you would have quit, you would have just been in the same position however many years ago that you were in. Exactly. You never know. It's like, had I quit, I would have never known this could even happen to me. You know, I would still be wondering, what if? Mm. You know, so I tell people, quit being so fearful of the what if and do the what if what if the what if is, is the best thing what if, what if is the greenest grass on the other side what sure. the what if is you finding your destiny in that what if yeah versus being on the side of what if i fail or what if you fail but you will never know until you try yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and to be honest with you they're both what ifs whether you're on what if this side or what if this side they're both <laughs> very that? costly exactly right? So you might as well just go for the one and it, it worst case scenario, you fail forward. Exactly. You're right. Exactly right. So I'm like, I would rather fail forward than not to try it all. You know what sure. I mean? So, yeah. Sure. And now that's changed your life, obviously. I know you're going to be speaking on a big stage next week at a conference that okay. we're going to both be at. Uh, and I say that just because this will drop in a few weeks and that will be passed, but I know you're going to kill it on, on stage and, and and spit a lot of fire there even. So, Pastor Darnell, let, let me ask you, can you give me a 30,000 foot view of your story, maybe a little bit of your past, some of that transition time? And then obviously we know your co-agency owners with Letitia and a pastor, but talk a little bit about that for us. Um, For me, I was on the other side of wanting to be free as far as ministry. Um, and, you know, I was at a job, um, I, I thank God for that job, it, you know, it helped pay bills, help provide, but it's kind of like when you're wanting more, sure. and you're willing to have that, uh, that, that space to be able to, to create your own destiny, that's mm -hmm. what I wanted, you know, and the insurance provided that lane for us, uh, because now, um, we were able to come together. I was able to help her out. She was able to help me. And now we're able to, both of us can live our dreams out. You know, I, I don't think, I don't believe that in a marriage, one person should be able to fulfill their dreams. I think that both should mm. be able to fulfill their dreams. Mm. You're you know, preaching now, I, man. You know, <laughs> I, I think, you know, I think about, you know, I tell people it's prep preparation and positioning. Mm. Uh, it was those moments that prepared us for this position. 
So we had to go through those, you know, bumps in the road. We had to go through, as people have been asking us about the, the cheeseburger story, we had to go through all those things in order to get us here. And, you know, for me, uh, it's just been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Uh, it, you know, it feels good to be able to know that if I have something to do other than insurance that I can take advantage of it, you know, that um, in this business, we've been able to pray for people. We've been able to uh, mm -hmm. counsel people. We've been able to uh, be a, as we say, we're, you know, we're no longer the borrower, but now we're the lender. Yeah. And that's Good. the biggest blessing of all. So uh, what has been created, what has been birthed out has been a blessing. You know, my story is her story, basically. You know? <laughs> so you heard it, heard it first. You know, that that was sure. our story, you know. Sure. And isn't it interesting how God can use Medicare, ACA, mortgage protection or whatever to fund the ministry? Yes. Exactly. Right? Yes. And, and, and I just want to stop here and look in the camera. Maybe you're in ministry today and you just go, I want to be full time, but maybe God is leading you down a different path in order to fund that ultimate vision. Could be insurance. It could be something else. Right. But I love that. I remember, Rob. So, you know, we started out in a small incubator, you know, so just it was like a basic cubicle is what we started out at. Mm -hmm. And as we continue to grow, we got a uh, little to different office space. And so we was looking to get a bigger space. But, you know, we wasn't sure because of you taking on more uh, more rent, more lights, water, just more just more bills and et cetera. And I remember God told me to get in position to so just get in position. And I said, Darnell, God said, get in position, but I don't know what he means by that, you know? So he said, well, you do what you, you do what you think he's telling you to do. So when we got in position and we got into the office we're in today, at the same time, we didn't know that the God was going to allow us to birth the ministry at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't have a place to go, didn't, didn't know where to start. And so it was like, okay, well, we can just have a Bible class right here in, in, the, in the office. And so I was, we was willing to let one of the office space go so we can have a small Bible class on Wednesday night. And so from that, uh, we was able to get a small space behind our office where we was at versus having a space here. And so it's just amazing how when you listen to the spirit and what he's telling you to do, how God just manifests and he just blows your mind, you know, just being sure. late. It's just sure. being late. So it's been amazing. So Pastor Darnell, talk about that for a minute because I people that watch my Spitting Fire podcast or listen to it now are in different spaces. I interview pastors, leaders in different spaces. Somebody says right now, how do I position myself? What's some practical advice that you would give them to, to position themselves for them to hear God and for them to get in that alignment with what God is ultimately calling them to do? Well, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, uh, faith uh, without works is dead. Mm -hmm. If you have the faith, you have to put in motion some type of action mm -hmm. behind you. Um, whether you put, even if you're putting action in failing, you're putting in the work because if you're going to fail, you're going to continue to learn. And pretty soon those failures are, are they're going to become success stories. So you have to be able to, hey, I believe this. I believe in my product. I believe in what I do. I'm going to go out there and work and I'm going to work. And as I work, I'm going to grow. It's going to happen for you. Because it's a biblical principle that is true, you know, and we have you have to trust in the process. You have to trust it. You know, you you know, you you can't stay on. I tell people all the time, you can't stay on the sideline forever. You gotta eventually get in the game. Mm -hmm. You gotta eventually get in the game. You don't practice to sit on the sideline. You practice to get in the game and play. So you have to you have to do work. You have to put in the work. Sure. Sure. No, I, I totally agree with that. And I hear, obviously, I know you guys already off camera, but know that your faith is very integral and to, an important part of what you do. But can you talk about that? Just just because we live in a culture nowadays and I'm, I'm not a hater. OK, this is not to be a divisive or contentious thing. But I was on a podcast earlier and someone asked me about you know, how do I balance my faith and and, and, and the secular part? And I go, I don't have to because it's it's who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I don't know if you guys believe this way, but I'd love for you to speak into it. I tell people all the time, this is not rude. This is not trying to be a beehole or nothing like that. But I'm OK with not being everyone's flavor. 
Right. And, yeah. and I have yeah. to give credit where credit's due. I can't leave God out of, you, you know, you understand that there's no testimony without him being a part of it and his gr grace and mercy. Letitia, will you talk about how important faith is to everything that you do, even the business? So faith plays a major role in everything that we do because I said faith our work is dead. But so going back to what I said, when God told me to move and, and move forward and get in position, I listened to what he told me. And from that on, he shows me, Letitia, I got you. Just trust me and obey me. And I, I got you all the way. So having faith, um, I tell people this business belongs to God. So we have to treat it just like that. Have treated with the respect and integrity and in love and keeping it keeping a, a great faith base here because without faith nothing is without faith it's impossible to even uh, please him and so without faith I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today you know I, we practice faith every day like right now I, I have faith that this chair is going to hold me up because it's going to hold me up why do I know I sit in my chair every day mm -hmm. just like God I have faith in him because every day he wakes me up every day. I'm in my right mind. I have that tease in my limbs. I have everything that I need. He provides that for me every day. And he reminds me every day what he's doing for me and has done for me and will continue to do for me. So without faith, um, it's impossible to please him. And so we, we got to have that and practice that every day in our lives. And I feel right. It's spear over into the business because it's one. I, I am the business. The business is me. Uh, I, I I have God in me. We're one. So we cannot separate the two. It's, it's impossible to. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time. For us, this is a ministry, mm -hmm. right? Because ministry is not what we do. It's who we are. So no matter right. where God has us and what space, whether we're speaking on stages, hosting a podcast, selling insurance, pastoring mm -hmm. a church, it's who we are. It's in our DNA. Pastor Darnell, as a pastor, church planner, how long have you had the church now? Uh, two years, It'd be two, two years. years, two years, two years, two years. Okay. So let me ask you this. H how did you know? Maybe there's somebody watching this today because it took um, faith to step out and be a pastor, right? So can you talk about that real quickly? Well, of course, now, biblically, the Bible talks about he that desires an office of a bishop desires a good work. So sure. the desire was in me to pastor. I just didn't know how and when. And I'm always uh, the type of person, I believe in protocol and I was under a pastor. He's a great man of God. And I spoke to him directly and I told him what I want to transition and do. And of course he gave me his blessing, but I still was a little hesitant because sure. for me, I was in a comfortable space. I was a, a second assistant pastor, you know, Hey, I wasn't the, the guy in charge, but you know, so, I had, you know, some guys that I could defer to on certain issues, but God kept speaking to me. And um, the last time he particularly spoke to me, I was like, Lord, but we're in a pandemic. He was like, it's time for you to go. I said, but Lord, we're in a pandemic. He was like, it's time for you to go. So, you know, I took heed um, to the voice of the Lord and what he told me to do. Sure. And as Leticia was saying, didn't didn't have no idea how we, we didn't know what was going to do, where it was going to be at church. I'm making plans to have service this day. I didn't know. I'm still looking for a place. And lo and behold, when we were looking at the office, the guy said, hey, I understand you're going to start a church. Let me show you this area on the backside. And it was perfect for what I was trying to do. And we were there for a few months and uh, a few months, we grew out, I grew that spot, and I went back and told him, I said, I need your other side, and he's like, I said, because we've outgrown that space, so right now, even currently, we're looking at, um, looking at some land to, to build something, so uh, God is, God is blessing, and you have to take, you have to hear that small voice that's on the inside of you, you have to understand that not every deal is for you, and some deals you may have to walk good. away you have to understand that not every connection or every relationship is for you. And you have to be able to willing to walk away from those relationships and from those deals um, that God says, okay, no, no, you don't, you need to get away from that person or you need to separate yourself from that because God is trying to take you a place of greatness and destiny. And that's what we, you know, all in the, I believe in the body of Christ, 
God wants his people to be successful. Yeah, I totally agree. So let me ask this. I'll ask you first, Pastor Darnell, and then Letitia. What in the past two years, what is the biggest way that God has grown you personally in that two years as a pastor and church planner? Is there something that kind of rises to the top that you go two years ago? You know, I may have been here, but God has really grown in maturity. It could be leadership wise. It could be spiritually. It could be, you know, multiple areas. But is there something that you just go, I know God has grown me in this particular area? Um, I would say this uh, servitude. Mm. I always remember that I'm always a servant. Mm. And, and I'm going to say this for men in business with their wife being able to submit to those that have more knowledge than you. Mm. Because when we first started, I had to recognize that my wife had more knowledge than me in this business than I do. And for a time, and we know we're not embarrassed about it, it was a it was a struggle. Because yeah. hey, I'm the man, I'm the, you know, yeah. you know, but I had to understand. And God had to, I had to humble myself and God had to say, hey, you gotta push your wife. You got to push her and, and, and help her to be the best that she needs to be. And by doing that, it worked out, you know, for us both, because she started understanding that ministry is my first call. Being a pastor is first for me. And when we start understanding the dynamics of who we were, man, it just began to just blossom like crazy. So. And, and it, before let you answer, Letitia, I, I think that's a powerful word. Like, uh, you know, as I grow in this podcast, one day I'll have like a flame emoji shooting up in the sky you know, <laughs> as you say that, because I think that's some serious fire that it, it's a struggle for a lot of men to do that. Right. To to submit in such a way that says, hey, you're further along in this niche or this arena than I am. But because you were willing to humble yourself and be congruent with your partner it began to fund the other and it began to skyrocket. So I, I definitely love that. Letitia, what about you as a pastor's wife? How, what have you seen grown in you or how has God grown you over the past two years? So uh, I'm going to piggyback off of Darnell because he, he did hit it on the head when he said that. But from my perspective is just learning to trust my husband more. Mm. And what I mean by that, trusting him and leading us in the right direction, even though he may not have as much knowledge in the insurance industry as I am, he's still my husband. He's still a man of God. He's still the head. And just trusting him to lead us in the right direction and making sure that we are doing the right things, not because I want to do it, but because it's the right thing to do. Um, also, too, in, in the ministry as well, trusting his vision, trusting mm -hmm. that that uh, what God is telling him to do is not just for our gain. It's not for our gain. It's for, it's for, the, it's for the kingdom gaining uh, from that. And so just trusting that no matter what we're faced with, as long as we continue to um, listen to him and obey him, that God got us. And so for me, be honest, that was a struggle at first because sometimes we feel like we know everything. What mm -hmm. can you do? Mm -hmm. But like he said, once we understood our role, once we understood what position God has put us in, and, 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 and once we learn how to merge that together, we realize how powerful we are together. You know, how, how, how much more can we affect people in the world and people in the kingdom from whether it's a spiritual side or business side? And so once we learn how to connect as one, it's when we see a tremendous growth, it's mentally, spiritually, and physically and financially as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love what you're saying because I believe so many couples and even my wife now working together, really together full time, just really only about a year. Uh -huh. You know, it's it 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 is a little bit more challenging than most people think it is. But I keep hearing this in from both of you: submission, servant's heart, being humble, being willing to trust. All these key ingredients you're throwing out there, and it's like God has just blessed it. And yes. so I think that's a word for somebody watching today, because I know it is. I, I've heard some things in there that that my wife and I went through as well, learning how to be on the same team, that we're going in the <laughs> same direction, that to be concurrent and in alignment with that divine assignment that 
that God has for us. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Leticia, real quickly, on regards to your, I know you're doing a six-figure challenge. Mm -hmm. Will you talk a little bit about that? What, what birthed that and, and what is the whole goal of that challenge? Yes. So um, I love to educate. I love to help interest agents, you know, to get going in their business. And so um, just starting here with our agency, um, just seeing how some of the agents were struggling to get started. And I realized that what I actually have done for me to grow my business can be duplicated. You know, oftentimes we get so caught up into what we're doing and continue to grow till we forget about the little things that can help people just getting started to grow. And, and so, I, so I talked with my team, I said, hey, I want to try something with you to see if you can duplicate exactly what I've done. And so we came together, had meetings and I started telling some things and they started implementing the project. I said, oh, wow, this really works. It, it, it can be duplicated. And so um, just from that, other people have reached out to me and asking, can I help them? Do I train? Do I coach? Am I a mentor? And my answer was no, I don't. Sorry, that's, that's not my lane. I don't do that. But the more I realized and talking with Darnell, he said, sweetheart, you are truly a teacher by heart. You, you get, you're so thrilled seeing people uh, actually being accomplished, you know, and you've been a part of that. And sure. so from that, I thought about, I asked our team, so as a new agent, what is missing to help you get started? Or if you've been in business for a while, what, what are you missing to help you get started and to stay focused in that? Sure. And so from that, God gave me some directions and helped me put it together. And so I said, hey, with Darnell's idea, let's just put it out there and let's just see what happens. And so for my first challenge here at the office, we had 10 people come and be a part of it. And, and I wasn't expecting 10. I was hoping 10, but 10 came. And what was so funny is it wasn't all insurance people. It was just people who were in business. And, and once we shared that I shared what the knowledge I had, they all could apply it. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And so I said, well, and so so many people wanted to come virtually. I said, well, let's try virtually. And so we did a four-week challenge from that. And just by again giving the, what I have God has given me to share with them has been very, uh, very helpful. And I almost didn't do it because I was like, well, I'm not where I want to be. I'm still learning every day as well. Mm -hmm. But one thing I realized, well, I may not be where I want to be, but the thing, information I have, someone else needed because they're in a mm -hmm. position that I used to be in at some point. And yeah. so many people do not share with you what they went through or how they did it. They always kind of just sugarcoat it and say, yeah, look yeah. where I am now. Mm -hmm. But they don't, they're not transparent with you with the toughness and what you got to go through to endure yeah. it. So, Hey, just, just put it out there and it, it, it's, it's been great. So it's, it's been yeah. great. And I think a lot of people sabotage their ultimate success because they feel like they don't have a lot to offer. Yeah. When in reality, people don't realize how hard it is to get to six figures. Exactly. But it's interesting that once you get there, you kind of look back and go, wow, you know, just a couple of key relationships, just a couple of key nuggets that I learned right. that propelled me. So let me ask you this first, Letitia, and then Pastor Darnell. What, what do you think the biggest breakthrough for you was or a key ingredient that, that you had to adopt or implement to get to six figures? Can you share on that just for a minute? Yes. Get over fear. Mm. Okay. Uh, but it was twofold fear. Uh, the first fear was, what if I don't make it? What if I can't? Yeah. The second Good. fear was, what if I do make it? Then what? Yeah. What's next, you know? Wow. So just, just getting over fear, getting over myself, and it's like, hey, you can do this, and, you know, and, and just, just applying what I did know. And once you met, it's like, oh, my God, this is true. I, I remember the day when we sat down, and you know how your turn is coming at the end of the year? At first of the year, I was like, this can't be right. This this is not right. Ain't no, there's no way that this happened. Or said, baby, we've been grinding. You, we've been putting our head down, getting focused and not worrying about what the next man is doing because we get so caught up in what other people are doing to where you can't put focus into what you're doing. And so once we got focused and get, get out of the fear, man, the sky was the limit. It was the limit for us. Awesome. Pastor Donnell, what about you? Um, you know, echoes on that, but also to, you know, as she was saying, we found the lane that works for us. 
and we trusted in the lane that we were in. And then, it, you know, you put your, your, your blinders on, you get the tunnel vision. And once you're in that lane, you trust that lane, you stay there. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, it just began to happen. You know, it began to work because it's no longer, I'm looking at, well, they're doing this or she's doing this or he's doing right. this. This is our lane. This is our design. And this is the way we work. You know, we, we, we see it even in the, 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 we see it in the restaurant business with McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Wendy's, they all have a different, different system, right? They all do burgers, but they all have a different system. And when we figured out what our system was, hey, this is our system, this is what we do, and this is what we're going with. And it, it just worked. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Coach Michael Burke calls it long obedience in the same direction. A lot of people are just not willing to be bad at something long enough until they get good at something. Right. And it sounds like you guys were just, no matter what, this is our lane. We're going for it practically, Letitia, because you talked about getting over that fear. What, maybe somebody's listening, watching today, and they have that kind of fear. What is something like a nugget you could give them to help them begin to break out of that so they can begin hitting that six figures? So um, one thing you want to ask yourself is, why not? Mm. Why, why not? You know, you see everybody else around you doing it, but why not you? So whatever that why not is, get rid of the excuse and make it the reason why you have to move forward. You know, also for me too, I realized that the first thing you have to do is change your mindset. That's the most thing you have to do is get your mind right. Whether you're reading, you're listening to, to more of speakers, you're in a circle of people who are actually doing what you're wanting to do. You have to get your mind right in order to move forward and be able to apply yourself. That, that's the first thing. I'm saying mindset first. You, you, your mind has to be set first. And then I got to piggyback because, you know, I say it all the time too, your purpose, you know, sure. you're here on purpose for a purpose. Why, you know, what is your purpose? Why are you doing what you want to do? And so, so your mindset and purpose and then identifying exactly what you want to do in this business. Like Darno said, sometimes we get... Uh, I'm focused because we want to do everything under the sun, different products that we want to do. But if you find your identity in the business and what's going to work for you and put your blinders on and plug into the right system, there's no way you cannot make, make six figures or even more. And like you said, once you make six figures, you can duplicate yourself over and over again. Well, what's interesting is, you know, we hear this multiple streams of income. It's It's just such a cliche thing and everybody kind of puts it out there but for a lot of people it becomes multiple streams of distractions because they haven't mastered one exactly exactly, like, exactly right and it sounds like you guys were willing to just be focused on one and now that one you've had success and is funding the other things that the lord is now opening up for you guys is, is that exactly. what i'm hearing that's exactly what you're hearing so i tell people like if you take your focus on one or two products or under like under age 65 or your medicare your life whatever you want to focus in good get real good master. at it first master it master down it. pack so where now you can get someone to duplicate your system and now you make an add on medicare you know add on as, as you go and master that and so you may say i'm growing slowly but to me i feel like you're building a strong foundation you build a strong foundation to where you can uh, continue to build. That way it won't crumble in the end. Sure. So let's talk about the power of events. I know you're a big event person. You go to a lot of events. You're, mm -hmm. you're speaking at some events. Um, a lot of people sometimes don't go to events because they say it's nothing more than a raw raw or this or mm -hmm. that. How is going to events, whether you're speaking at an event or attending an event, how has it helped you break through professionally? Wow, oh, that's a loaded question there. Sure. Um, I would say this, going to events, you're now surrounded by people who thinks like you. Mm -hmm. So you know you're not in, a, you're not in, this, in this market by yourself. And just hearing this story or getting the right connection or even having a friendship that you can talk to and you can converse with and you can motivate one another and you can be that support system for another is huge. 
It is, I cannot even describe how huge it is. It's kind of like when you go to church and you're feeling down, you get that word in you. Oh, that's, that's exactly what I needed, Pastor, to get me through the next week. You go and you get filled up with positivity, or you may just get that one go to another that you need to hear to grow your business to the next level. I do not downplay any type of events because it's one thing you can always get from it. It's always one thing you can always gravitate from and say, you know what, out of all the hundred speakers I heard, that one person said one thing that I needed to hear to go back and implement in my business. Yeah, no. What about you, Pastor Darnell? I know you've been to a couple of things there. What about you? What's kind of a big takeaway when you've attended one of these events? Well, you know, it's, it, it goes back to iron shoppers iron. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, insurance agents, Sharpen other insurance agents, you know, and it, it we I think sometimes we make it harder than what it is. Yeah. But if you're around the right people, your tools are going to get sharp. Mm -hmm. um, she went to Apex Nation and she came back, and I thought she had been to revival or something. She yeah. was just on yeah. fire, but it was what she needed. Sure. To help her to overcome that hump or over, overcome that to get to the next level. And, you know, that one particular moment in her life helped her get to the next level. So it's important to be around people that know more or know, you know, know what you know or talk. You hear all type of stories, you get encouragement, you get uplifting, and you need that in this business. Yeah, it's definitely can be hard, overwhelming, frustrating. And uh, I know for me, attending events and conferences, it's just been the relationships that I have formed. Some of my best friends in the industry today, I met for the first time at events and they have been godsends and voices, or, you know, ears for me to kind of call when I'm, when I'm overwhelmed or whatever the case may be. So I'm a strong believer in events. They've changed my life. I will continue to go to them. And I always encourage people to do that. Just a, three more questions here as we get ready to wrap up. Okay. Leticia, let me ask you this. What is one leadership trait that you have learned that you've cultivated in your life and that you lead others from? I would say this, always be coachable. Okay. No matter where you are in your business, whether you're at the top or the bottom, you can always continue to learn something new to help you to continue to grow. And just know that everybody is not in the same position as you. And when you can learn that and remain coachable, remain humble, leadership will always continue to grow and become better and better each, each and every day. No, I, I love that. What about you, Pastor Darnell? Is there a leadership trait that just rises to the top that you've learned, that you've really leaned into and that you lead others from? Um, for me, um, I always put myself in the other person's shoes, you know, and always, I always remember that no one um, should be on an island by themselves. Mm. What I mean by that is you don't have to put yourself in a box and be alone. I mean, even God said it's not good for man to be alone, right? So, yeah. so you don't, don't, everyone needs someone to hold them accountable, you know, to make you come out of that box and make you, you know, grow. And, you know, you should never be on an island by yourself. Definitely. Oh, that, that's good. I, I love that. Both of those tips that you guys shared. Let, let me ask you this. You guys lead how many agents are in your agency? Currently 14 and growing, but currently okay. 14. Yeah. As leaders, mm -hmm. maybe somebody today is kind of nervous about they may have been a one man or one woman show, but now they want to hire some people, right? But they're, they're maybe fearful of how they would lead them. What is something that you've had to learn? And we'll start with Letitia and go Pastor Darnell is that you've had to learn Letitia to help lead people well, because as you well know, you can't lead everybody the same exact way. Right. So what is something you've had to learn as a leader to help lead people well? I've learned that everyone learns differently. Hmm. I learned that everyone is not me, so I cannot expect them to do things exactly how I would do things. Um, learning um, where they are 
and, and, and seeing how I can help them apply what I want them to learn from me and then make it their own. Um, learning that everyone has different personalities. And so once you can cultivate that personality, you can learn to get along with anybody and find out what helps, th helps them to be motivated so you can continue to lead them in such a great way as well. But I will say that we, there will be mistakes, there will be errors, but you yeah. learn from them. And when you make a mistake, you be the bigger person and go back and apologize to that person to, hey, I'm sorry, I've talked to you wrong or you was right, I was wrong. That shows the person that, hey, I make mistakes too as a leader. It shows that you are a real person and that they're not a robot and that you don't expect them to be, you know, to, to do things all the time like they need to. And also by you apologizing, they will own up to, to their mistakes as well to get it right. Yeah. What about you, Pastor Darnell? What, what is something that you've learned to help lead people well? Well, one thing I've learned is that, you know, I, I try to put it, I try to put people in these three classes. You have good, all right, and bad. <laughs> I'm so Those that are good. You definitely yeah. want to continue to make them continue to strive for goodness. Those that are all right, you got to understand they're all right. They need a little tweaking. Yeah. So you got to have a little patience with them and you got to be able to elevate them and, and to get them mm -hmm. to the next level and know it's going to take those time. Those that are bad, you really have to have a lot of patience with them. But if they have a willingness, if they have a heart's desire to do better, then that's giving you something that you can work with. And so when you're in leadership, you, as she was saying, you have to understand everyone is not on the same level. Every, we have to be truthful. Every agent is not, it's possible, but every agent is not going to burst out making X amount of dollars. Sure. But it's always a possibility to do greater. Sure. And if you're willing to put in the work, you know, we're willing to help you. We're willing to encourage you to grow, you know. So you just have to have a little uh, patience with people. That's one of the best things you can do is being a leader. So let me give you part B to this question because I was thinking as you were talking about somebody right now is saying, how do I know when to let go of the bad? Not that you don't love them, that you don't believe in them, but maybe they're just not congruent with where, you know, they're going. H have you had to deal with that? And if so, what was the best strategy that worked for you guys? Well, you know what? We probably should let that person go sooner than then later. Mm -hmm. So we just kept holding on to it. And long sure. we held on to it, oh my God, it got worse and worse because mm -hmm. we was taking it home, like what we're going to do. But um, I would say this though, if that person does not fit your culture, if they cannot respect your rules in the office and cannot respect you as a leader and there are a cancer in your office, get rid of them a lot faster. Then, then later, because if not, then they can disrupt the whole flow of your office. So I would say it's, it's the sooner the better from my, from my experience. Sure. You agree, Pastor Darnell? Anything you want to add to that? Uh, definitely, definitely in the business world. Uh, <laughs> definitely in the business world, you want to yeah. you you break ties peacefully. Um, sometimes that's a hard conversation. Sure. You know, you have to, you know, tell someone that maybe this is not the best thing for you. Not saying you're not a good person or not, but right now, this is not the best thing for you. And those are some hard conversations, yeah. but that's part of being in leadership. Sure, You have to have those hard conversations with people who are, uh, as you, who are not up to par where you need to be, you know? Sure. No, and I think that's a good point real quickly to point out as people that are listening and watching this is, You'll never be a leader who leads people well if you're not willing to have those hard conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who's my, me have been in ministry for 20 years, church planner, pastor for seven. Nobody ever woke up and went, yes, I want to have these hard conversations, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? They're not fun, but you have to have them. And would you agree, and both of you can answer this if you want to real quickly, would you, would you agree that you grew just as much as those people grew in having those conversations like you grew as a leader? Oh, definitely. Not that. It, 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 it makes you have tough skin. You know, yeah. you have tough skin after that. Sure. Um, and, and, and it teaches you um, that, you know, there's there's the other side of the business, you know, especially when you're in leadership. 
you know, we 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 rejoice when we're doing good. We rejoice when you like to say, yay, yeah. yay, good, we're doing good. But when you do have to wake up and say, I have to let so-and-so go, it's not a yay. It's not a good feeling in yourself. But you got to understand, this is your livelihood, you know. I can't go to my children and say, hey, well, we can't go to so-and-so because so-and-so cost me to lose business. That's not a conversation that I'm not going to have with my kids, you know, and, um, you know, so you have to have, you know, tough, tough talk is part of it, you know, it, it, it helps you though, it helps you. Yeah. And, no, and I, you kind of know the next time, so you yeah. don't let it get so far down the road, you kind of cut it off before it gets that, you know, gets bad or whatever. And I found out too, early in leadership, that a lot of times I would make up a scenario that really like this, you know, this was going to happen the worst, and then you get in there. And I'm not saying some folks ain't cray cray, right? They just are. You can, you can, no, matter how much, no matter how much you pray for them, you can give them gold. They're still going to be mad at you. Right. Exactly. But, but it, most of the time it didn't go as bad as I thought it would go. And I go, and I go why didn't I have this conversation earlier? Have you guys seen that exactly. as well? Yep. Most most definitely, it's like once the conversation is had, we feel bad for the moment, but then the next day is so much peace, right? It's right. it's just a peace that comes that comes across that this should have been done a lot sooner. But I will say this though, we have done it a, a couple of times, unfortunately. But I will say the people we had to let go, we still have a friendship, a group relationship with those people, and they understand why we had to let them go, and they also agree where they was short and had a short end of the stick on. And so, like I said, we, we, we do do it in peace. Thank God it's been great. It's been great, great peace there. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point to make as well is that all conflict doesn't have to be bad conflict. There can be right. a peaceable resolution. So I definitely love that you brought that point up. Uh, as we get ready to close shop today, wrap up, I always ask people that come on the podcast this question, Pastor Darnell, I'll start with you. What is, if there was one word we would use to describe Pastor Darnell, if you said this is one word that really fits me, what would that one word be? Wow. Um, I'm going to say this. People don't, people don't know I'm a, I'm a serious, compassionate guy. Okay. So I was, so, but, uh, hold up. I told him, he's a pastor. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Can we put that, can we put yeah. that term or phrase? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I would say, Compassionate. compassionate. Okay. So how has being compassionate contributed? And I'm going to use this for the spiritual side and the non-spiritual, but I think you'll get when I say it this way to the overall success of the ministry as well as the business. Well, and I'm glad you asked that question. Okay. For me, you know, as being the spiritual and what happened was there were times when Leticia was just, <laughs> that's all right. I, that's all right. I had to talk to her heart and say, baby, let's, let's have some compassion yeah. and put ourselves in the position because her mentality of thinking is business, you yeah. know, business. So there were times I had to, you know, be the compassionate one. Yeah. We say it multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But right. um, that's how it's, you know, kind of um, helped, helped a lot. You know? So you, so basically that spirit of compassion, that posture of compassion, you brought it into the business sense and the church sense. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of helped yes. when you needed there. Uh, Leticia, what about, what about one word for you that, that really rises to the top that you said, this is what really describes Leticia? I'm going to use the word love. Love. So talk about how love has contributed on both sides, the spiritual and in, 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 in the workplace. How is that being a loving person or that person of love contributed to your overall success? Okay, so of course love draw people, right? And so when people know that you love them, they feel that from you, whether it's on a spiritual side or a natural side, you're showing that love also shows compassion as well but show that they really, you really care for their well-being even from my client's point of view they can tell i love spending time with them i love talking to them i love getting to know them i love just sharing um all i can for them i love giving and so because i have love in me it's what grows people 
well, I would say it what brings people to us on the business side from every aspect, from, from clients to our co-worker, to our workers, to our team members. And also on, on the church side, you know, in, in church, we have to show love to one another. That's only you're going to draw me in unto me is, is showing love. No matter what walk of uh, state of life they're in, just showing love and showing that they are love. Because some people don't, don't get that. And so when you can show love and show that you really care for them, um, it just goes a long way. No, and I, and I love that you guys are willing to be that real. And, and Pastor Darnell, I, full disclosure, uh, Gina was probably the, the more compassionate one than, than <laughs> me. I, I grew up with a single mom, age of nine, raising three kids, and you just had to kind of be hard and mm -hmm. put the big boy underwear on, as I used to say. <laughs> you had to do what you had to do. And it's not that I didn't love people, but Gina was definitely the one that taught me how to be more compassionate because I was the kind of just come on, you know, get going and <laughs> make it happen, you know, and, and there was nothing wrong with that. But I just lacked a little bit of that grace. Saturated yeah. with that. So I get it. And, and I feel you guys and appreciate you being willing to be real. Let me ask you this as we close, is there anything just boiling over in your spirit that you just go, I, I want to share some, I just want to share this. I feel like I need to share this before we close today. Maybe somebody's out there, Letitia, Pastor Darnell, maybe they're out there and, and they want to bet on themselves, but they're, it's just like everything is just coming against them. Is there anything that you could just share with them or it's just something that's just boiling over in your spirit that you go, I believe this would really help someone today? So, you know, I, I got to say this, I got, this is one of my scriptures I always say, and it's seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It is very important to seek him with all his righteousness and everything that you ever want could be added unto you, but you have to put him first. You have to recognize him. You have to obey. You have to hear what he's telling you, because he's going to direct you to exactly where you need to be. And those things that we think we want, he'll show you that's not good for you. Mm. And he will direct your path into the right path. So that way you won't have any regrets of moving forward. But, but recognize him first in everything you do. Mm. Pastor Darnell, anything you add to that? Um, I would definitely say to definitely put your faith over your fear. Mm. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna be very, you know, bold and truthful. Fear will always be there. Put your faith over your fear. Mm -hmm. and let your faith guide you and let fear chase you but mm -hmm. the problem is we allow fear to stop us and we'll never get to going so put your faith over your fear and i guarantee you you'll you'll be successful listen you guys were spitting some fire there at the end i was looking i, I thought i heard the choir singing i was looking for the offering play <laughs> raise the offering I, I, I'm, not, I'm about to go to the altar man i'm about to go to the altar. <laughs> fire there at the end and listen wh where can we find you guys i know Letitia, i want you real quickly to mention the podcast i know that you're starting the podcast will you talk a little bit about that i know we can find you there but also yes. after that will you give us some other places we can find you guys okay. you can find me uh our podcast healthy talks with my health care lady where we bridge the gaps about uh for entrepreneurs just telling about how it's important to have a healthy living such as being financial spiritual mentally and how to implement that in your business so healthy talks with my I have played is, is the podcast name. And then uh, you can go to our Facebook page, Letitia Jackson. Also, we have our Instagram, Letitia.Jackson. That's J A C K S N, no O, J A C K S N. You can find us there. And I uh, love, love to, to talk with you some more. Absolutely. And I'll put all the links in the, in the description when this video comes out. And for those listening, you can go to the YouTube channel or write it down and go search them both out but as we close today once again i just want to remind all of you guys the reason we do this is because i believe there is a leader in all of you and i pray that something that we said today i, I not just motivates blow past motivate but deeply divinely inspires you to be what god has called you to be so as always, please like, comment, subscribe, turn the notifications on. That way you're notified every time we drop fresh content like this and share this with somebody who needs to hear this message today. I'm going to close by just saying, God bless you guys. Make it an awesome day. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Talk to you guys. Bye. Bye.